So welcome back to AP Physics C. Uh, this is Unit Four, right? So this is going to be the first video in the in the in this unit. So here we're going to look at what happens when moving charges move into magnetic fields. So they are going to be um, affected by the magnetic field. Um, so let's kind of dive into this. So the first thing, let's talk about what is a magnetic field. So you may remember from like middle school or from elementary school, you used to take the iron filings, you dump it on paper, you put a magnet underneath, and you see the iron filings trace out the, the field lines, okay? So the magnetic field lines will show the direction that the north pole of the magnet will push or pull. Um, so magnets just will be just like um, charged particles when they follow the rules of opposites attract and likes repel. Uh, the lines will move from north to south. So out of north into south, all right. Um, now, to determine the magnetic field strength, it's going to be measured in Tesla. Uh, and this represents the force that a magnetic field exerts on a magnetic pole inside of it. So there is parallel between electric fields and magnetic fields. So when we talked about the electric field strength, it's like we brought a, a test charge into that electric field. And the, mag the, the field strength would be what does it feel when it's in that um, electric field? Now, when the charged particle right, uh, enters in a magnetic field, they're going to experience a force because of that magnetic field that is given by the equation F equals QV cross B. Okay, And so if we look at it and we want to remove that cross product, we can just simply add in our sign. So QV, QVB sine theta. So that's how you would determine um, this here, right, would be the magnitude of B, right, of the, of the, of the force. And the direction is going to be given by uh, one of our many right-hand rules here in um, the magnetic field unit. So you can see the diagram here. Um, so we take our right hand, we put our fingers our thumb is going to point in the direction of the velocity of a positive charge. So that's going to be important, especially if your charge is negative. Uh, and then our, our fingers are going to represent the direction of the magnetic field. And then our palm is the force, right? So velocity, magnetic field, force, okay? Now, there are some orientations to, to take note of. If you see these two designations, um, the first one is uh, sorry, not out, not into the page. The first one is actually going to be out of the page. All right. And then the second one is going to be into the page. All right. So the way to think about it is if you think about an arrow and where people are in relation to that arrow. So if I'm looking at the arrow and it's coming at me, I'm gonna see the, the tip of the arrow. That's why it's a circle with a dotted. And if I'm looking the other way, okay, if I'm looking as the person who has released the arrow, I see the feathers. That's the reason why it's an X, because it's leaving me, okay? Now, the path of a uniform, of a charged particle will sometimes, will generally be a circle, right? So when they enter into a magnetic field, the force is gonna be, kind of perpendicular to where that happens. And so a lot of times what they'll do is they'll relate it back to um, circular motion, right? And so they'll say MV squared, MV squared over R is equal to QVB. Again, as long as they're at 90 degrees to each other, or the V and the B, right? We don't have to worry about the sine because sine of 90 is equal to one. And then you can do a little bit of algebra here, right? Um, so you cancel the V on the right, cancels one of the V's on the left, and sometimes they'll ask you for the radius, right? So R would be equal to MV over QB, okay? And so you can see some relationships established here with R. So R is directly proportional to mass. So the larger the mass, the bigger the radius. Um, it is also directly proportional to V, right? So the larger the, the velocity, 
the larger the radius. But on the other hand, it's going to be inversely proportional to um, Q, the charge, and also inversely proportional to the magnetic field. Okay, so the, the, the larger Q, smaller R, right, larger B, smaller R, okay. Now, some real-world uses of this interaction is going to be the old-school TVs or monitors, those cathode ray tubes. So, um, and you can see here's a diagram here for a cathode ray tube. So, it's going to shoot out an electron, and then you have these coils that are going to deflect them into the, the screen, and it's going to light up, okay? You also have these, uh, what are called cloud chambers, right, so where you can see particles collide. Uh, and then, so the other real world, excuse me, the other real world example would be not particle, uh, particle detection in particle accelerators, okay? And then there, another way that you can also determine the speed, um, especially if you have the electric field, it's just the ratio of electric field to magnetic field strength, okay? So let's look at an example problem um, pertaining to this equation and these relationships. So here we have an electric, uh, an electron entering magnetic field with a strength of 1.5 times 10 to the negative 5 teslas, a velocity of 2.2 times 10 to the 6, which is perpendicular to the field. So you can see the diagram down here in the bottom left. What's the force? What's the radius? And then in, how does the rate? How is the radius affected when we do different things to different uh, pieces? The mass, the charge, the speed, the field strength, and the mass. Okay. So key thing to note. It's an electron, so when we do our right-hand rule, right? remember our right-hand rule follows the positive. So if we end up with, like, let's say, a, a, an upward force, that means it would be a downward force because it's an electron. Okay, so let's look at the first part of this. So we're looking for the force. And all we have to do is QVB because right here they tell us it's perpendicular, right? So all we do is multiply charge times velocity times magnetic field strength. So we would have... Uh, charge 1.6 times 10 to the negative 11th, or sorry, negative 19th. We would have velocity 2.2 times 10 to the 6th. And then we would have our field strength 1.5 times 10 to the negative 5th Tesla. Plug that into our calculator, and we find that the electron entering this field would have a, uh, would have feel a strength, a, a magnitude of 5.28 times 10 to the negative 8th negative 18th newtons. Now, what direction would it be? So again, velocity is going to point in the direction, or thumb is going to point in the direction of velocity, fingers point in the direction of the uh, field, right? So it's into the page, right? Um, so B is going to go into the page. Our V is going to go to the right. Now, remember, our palm is the positive charge, but this is an electron. So our the strength would be in the negative or, or direction be in the negative y direction so what would happen to this proton as it enters the field the second it enters the field it's going to be pushed down right and so it'll follow a circular path much like that okay and then part b says what is the radius of that path so we kind of have that our equation already solved r equals mv over qv now, the mass of an electron is 9.11 times 10 to negative 31. V, 2.2 times 10 to the sixth. And then Q um, is, one, or sorry, yes, 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th. And then Tesla is 1.5 times 10 to the negative fifth. And we find that the radius is going to be 0 0.84 meters, right? So the radius of this path, right? would be 0 0.84 meters. Now, let's look at part C where it talks about how does the radius change if we change certain aspects of the, um, of the particle or of the, of the speed, right? So remember our general form, R equals MV over QB. And let's apply our factors of one method. So for part C, I, the mass, if we double the mass, so we're going to replace Put every, where there's a one for everything, right? That stays constant and put the factor in for that value. So what would happen to my radius? It would also double. 
Now what happens if the charge of the moving particle, particle is tripled? So leave the mass alone, speed alone, triple the, the charge, leave the magnetic field alone. So our radius would decrease by a factor of three. Okay, and then finally, or two more, the speed, if, if we were to have the speed, so that's one, one half the speed, and then we would have our Q is one and our B is one. So what would happen to our radius, right? It'd be one half of what, of our original value. And now a little bit more complicated one where we would quadruple the, the magnetic field, but then also um, the mass is reduced by one third. So we would do one third, speed the same, charges the one there. And so if we do a little bit of algebra, you find that the radius would be one twelfth the original. So this is what happens when a, a charged particle enters a magnetic field. The next video, we're going to look at what happens when we have current carrying wires.